Painting with thread is not a new concept in fiber art. Thread, fabric, and stitches combine to give projects dimension and style. Our guest during this mini-series has taken this common sewing art form and altered it, giving you, the artist, great freedom and expression. I'd like you to welcome back Karen Lunduska, a full-time fiber artist who has found expression with decorative stitches. Karen, you know, we're going to start off with a tree, and a tree is a great place to work with those decorative stitches. Right. It's, I'm inspired by nature, lines, fabric, decorative stitches, and thread. Today, I'll combine these items to show how to make fiber art with dimensional trees as a focal point. All you need is thread, fabric, decorative stitches, along with the willingness to experiment on the settings on your sewing machine. Decorative stitch thread painting, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala sewing cabinets, hand-built in the USA by American craftsmen, customized for you. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The first step of decorative stitch thread painting is to create the background with decorative stitches and layers of fabric plus rayon thread and then make sure that you use a embroidery needle with the, along with the rayon thread. But the stitch you see in the background looks rather sporadic. It is a cross stitch, a very neat looking cross stitch but altered. Or you could use a zigzag stitch or another utilitarian stitch. Karen's going to show you how to alter this. So Karen, you have it set up for the cross stitch, but it's going to have a totally different look. Right, and I start out with the layered of the fabric, the medium weight stabilizer, quilt batting, quilt top fabric. How I'm gonna alter this is I'll lower the feed dog, and that's it, and then it just creates a very funky line. Now the foot you're using is a traditional quilting foot. Yeah, it's the Echo quilting foot. It's used for free motion, and I just use it with the feed dogs up, and it gives me plenty of view to look and to um, move the threads around. It covers all different layers. So because you're forcing it, feed force, feed, it, feeding it through the machine faster, it gets that very altered stitch. So you could stitch the background fabrics, which are 11 by 15, and that little insert is going to be five by eight. You'll find it in the book that accompanies the program. And then the next stitch we're going to share with you, which we also showed in the first program, is the stitch along the lower area of that insert. You'll be working with the five by eight piece separately and adding the two together later, but adding a five by three, and it's kind of angled piece to the lower edge, and then working with an asterisk decorative stitch, altering it, not the traditional way, but altering it larger. Right. I've got it set at the default setting. I'm going to max out the width and the length. So it'll make it wider and longer. And then I'll just stitch it out. And as a rule of thumb, whatever I add to the top of the quilt, I try to add a color to the bottom. So a thread to color. Mm -hmm. Create a color balance. And just work with it. Now this time you have the feed dogs up. Right, I do. And you just are going to be adding several colors. So as Karen keeps stitching away, you'll see as we progress, we'll be adding more colors along the lower edge area and then incorporating those colors in the tree trunk. When I took a class from Karen, the only guideline she gave the students was to always use a stabilizer. The rest is freeform stitching. And the freeform stitching comes next in the shape of this tree. There are multiple layers of thread, fabrics, yarns, all built up to make an interesting texturized freeform artistic tree. The first step we're going to work with is to add some couching to the outer edges of a tree shape. And on this sample you can see a tree shape drawn. There will be a template included in the book or you can draw your own shape of a tree. And then maybe if you have a light background, fill it in with a fabric marking pen. 
the fabric is going to be stitched in slivers around just to build up and give dimension with a stippling stitch. And Karen is going to alter the stitch by forcing the fabric through the machine. And Karen, I'll let you set up your machine and tell everyone how that works. Okay, I'm using the default setting and the way I'm going to alter this is I'll push it through faster. So you just have a small little piece of fabric. Right, and I just cut strips and I'm just basically just going to have them pulled down. I won't even lift it up because I don't care if the stitches go all over the tree. So I just keep stitching. And until you get a base, you don't cover the entire section, just portions of it. Right. I'll feed it into the branches and add different areas. Very interesting. And then this, the next step is to do some outlining. An outlining shape will be done with a basic satin stitch. Now, those of you may know that a satin stitch is just a variation of a normal zigzag. If you shorten the stitch length, you're going to end up with a satin stitch. And that's just a simple outline stitch that I think many of you have done in the past in one way or another. I add it for my branches. Um, I add it across the base of the, the trunk as uh, kind of in a freeform zigzag across it. Uh -huh. But how I do my branches is I'll just draw it out And then when I get to the where I want the branch to end, I turn the machine sideways and just pull it to a point. And that straightens out that wide zigzag to a, an attractive finishing area. Right, and I don't, see it doesn't come out exactly perfect, but that's how I do my, my branches. And I'll just keep building this uh -huh. up and up until I get the amount that I want. Thread pulled. While Karen changes threads, I'm going to show you another option that you can add to this design, and that is texture with yarn. There is some eyelash yarn tucked under here, and we'll be using this in many forms throughout the program. It gives dimension, interest. It's kind of subtle, but to put the eyelash yarn into place, you can use a rickrack stitch. It's just a zigzag stitch that it goes over the zigzag three times so that it gives a heavy buildup. If you didn't have this rickrack stitch or something comparable, just consider using a zigzag stitch just to stitch it down. You could use contrasting thread, you can use matching thread. Remember, this is an art form so that you can make the changes. So that the setting right now Karen is putting into her machine is this rickrack stitch. Mm -hmm. and and what about the, the default, default setting is obviously what it comes up as and... Right, I'm going to make it narrower in width and, long, and longer in length. So it'll be a long skinny zigzag. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is use it to couch down my yarn. And I apply this yarn the same way I apply the fabric and the um, satin stitches, is I just add it randomly to wherever it's all going to be layered on top of, on top of itself. Mm -hmm. What I like about this form of stitching is that it's very freeing. You've given us permission to not be accurate. And exactly. I, I, I like that idea of not always being so accurate. And as she's stitching her sample, you can look at her sample and see that that foreground has some additional thread colors, that orange section. You'll see gold and brown and green. So whenever you change thread colors, just do a little bit more stitching of that asterisk stitch. So now we're getting near to adding the fourth layer. And a little bit of orange was needed. She, Karen, you'd like to pull in colors from the border. Correct. And obviously this is the finished one, but there are slivers of orange fabric or thread you can add in this area and that's what's coming next. And to do this, you're just going to use a zigzag stitch or you could use a stippling stitch. There are no rules except to use a stabilizer. Correct. I am um, just adding the zigzag to the top of the fabric. And I don't, like again, I don't worry that it's not down perfectly because eventually I'll catch everything with all the other layers. 
You're just building and building and building layers. Right. And I'll even stitch with the threads where I don't stitch anything down because uh -huh. I want to add all that texture. Notice Karen's hand position. She's force feeding the fabric through so that the stitches aren't even. And that foot, because it rides above the fabric, makes it easy to twist and turn. Mm -hmm. And now we'll look at one final stitch. You could, there are no rules as we mentioned. You could certainly make changes accordingly, but Karen recommended using a ladder stitch. If we look closely, there's a red stitch that meanders through this design, kind of adding some interest. And that stitch looks just like this, but never stitching it in the straight position. Again, winding it around so that it builds up the, the bark of the tree trunk and also the texture. Okay. Quick thread change and you're ready to go. Right, and this is my final layer. Um, I'll add it because I wanted a little bit of red to kind of, sorry, to add a little bit of drama. Each layer of thread that I've added to the um, tree, I've added a layer to the ground also with the asterisk stitch. Mm -hmm. I can see that, right. And again, I'm just doing this meandering. I go down to the end of the branches just to add that um, dramatic red color. So pulling and pushing changes those stitches. And if you add enough layers, it really gives great interest. So as Karen continues to do the stitching, you would simply add and add to your layers of your sample. And then the next step that we're going to look at is to add the foliage to the tree. You get to work with a lot of beautiful threads in this project. So now for the foliage of the tree, choose three different shades of green or browns or fall colored. We're obviously doing a spring or, spring or summer color could use some variegated solids. Just choose your favorites. And Karen's then going to be working with the Rick Rack stitch. We worked with this a little bit earlier for some couching. This is in its traditional size that comes up when you choose it in your machine or the default setting. And we're going to make it much smaller. We're going to narrow the width, shorten the length, because this stitch is going to do the meandering stitch to create this beautiful, lacy foliage of the tree, the leaves of the tree. Mm -hmm. And Karen, you kind of start with a sample. Right, I do. I, I practice and I test it. Um, I've changed my width to 2.5 on the machine and my length to 1.5. Mm -hmm. I actually lower my tension a lot on this. I want it to, to not pull too much. But then I'll practice and test it on my test sheet. Then I start stitching on my tree. You've already stitched one color. I do. I'm adding the second color now, and part of it is pull. Pull and push. Exactly. A lot of pulling, pushing, spinning. Now the amazing thing about this is that many of you I know are hesitant to lower the feed dogs of your sewing machine, but Karen did not lower the feed dog. She's just loosened the tension, and with that foot that doesn't have a firm contact with the fabric, she's able to do this manipulation. It's fun to watch you work. It's a lot of spinning. So that decorative stitch looks nothing like it is pictured on the machine screen. Exactly. So after you've added second color, then throughout the entire area, you'd add a third color, whatever color you'd like to work with, and then just keep building one on top of the other. So we're going to soon get to that point, and it goes pretty quickly to, to change the thread in the machine. And if you don't have a quilting foot, you might want to consider that as an addition, because you're going to be going over a lot of layers, maybe the branches that have been built up, or the extra fabric from the tree. So you need a, a space from the foot, and that's what Karen has been able to do with the combination that she's working with. It's a bright green, so you've added a, a nice color. Right. I like the contrast of all the different greens, but basically how I'm creating this 
little long thing is I'm pulling mm -hmm. and I'm pushing up and down. I don't use the reverse stitch <laughs> at all. And then when I get up to the top of the tree, I just, I'm just really drawing mm -hmm. with this and I'm filling in areas and layering. And while Karen works on this, I'm going to show you the next step, and that is to add a fern stitch, another very, very common stitch. This fern stitch looks much like what you just saw in my sample on the actual art print, and that is have the fern stitch mirror imaged as well as the correct image. So we're going to flip it as we're working with this. So are you ready to do that stitching? I am, I am going to single stitch this so it only stitches out one stitch pattern. Mm -hmm. Right now I've got it. So I will turn my fabric upside down and it will mirror to the left. So I will stitch that out. And again, you're just giving a little nudge if you right. want to change it. I'm guiding it in the direction I want it to go. It's got a curve, but I can curve it a little bit more. So Karen would be adding a few more of these and you can see that on the finished project. So with a little creativity, some thread and decorative stitches, you can add the foliage and the foreground. Now to add additional dimension, Karen is going to show us how to accent the horizon line on this unique scene by using three strands of yarn and just a basic zigzag or multiple zigzag technique. It's really the detail becomes in the yarn and the twisting and turning of the fabric. Correct. I use three yarns. I'll stitch it on the edge of the piece to hold it down and then I twist it in one direction and I have a little pushing tool and I just gather and sew. And I'm using a zigzag stitch to hold it down. And within minutes, you, seconds even, you can have lots of dimension by just using that yarn. Gives me more encouragement to collect yarns. Yes. Just what I need, more stuff. Right. <laughs> very, very nice. And as Karen works on this, you'll see that we're soon getting to the end of adding the enough embellishment to our scene, the focal point of the scene. And we have just one of our samples at the next stage to show you what comes at this point. You would trim your design to five by seven. And this one doesn't have any leaves on it. This is a fall scene, no leaves on it. And then after you've trimmed it to five by seven, overlay it on the large background piece that you did the stitching earlier. And we've started to applique it into place, but not just with a zigzag stitch, but with a grass stitch. We use this in our first program, straight along one edge, and the grass-like stitching on the other and just apply it into place. And I like your idea, Karen, of offsetting the motif. It's not in the center, it's to the lower right-hand corner. I think it adds visual interest. And as far as talking about visual interest, we have two more of her designs that have stretched the designs and the stitches even further. This tree design has greater e emphasis. Mm -hmm. And you have some additional scallop stitches along the edge of the, of the foreground. It's just a bigger piece. Right. And you've also used some decorative stitches in that pond-like section down below. It's pretty abstract and fun. And it's also a way to use those scraps. You can add them any way you want. Just it's fun. It's very fun. And now you don't just have to work with trees or flowers as we've done so far in this series. This little design features just linear markings or linear stitches. In a, it almost looks underwater to me. Right. It does. So with fabrics and with netting, she stitched over netting, just the straight stitching using altered stitches, pushing them through or letting the fabric feed normally. It gives great style. Karen, you have great ideas. Thanks for sharing with that, those with us. Well, thank you for having me. And I hope you'll enjoy working with us. Those of us who sew and quilt know the therapeutic benefit that comes from working with needle and thread. 
We may joke that our creative outlet keeps us sane. My guest during Nancy's Corner learned the art of monk quilting, creating story quilts while in a refugee camp. She's confident that the ability to sew and quilt maintained the sanity of many of the women in her camp. I'd like you to meet Mai Zhang Wu, an advocate for refugee families who helps these families assimilate to their new culture. Mai Zhang is also a proponent of keeping the art among quilting alive. Mai Zhang, you have brought us samples that are cause shivers to go up my spine because of the stories they tell and mm -hmm. the intricate work. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Now this is a beginner sampler. Right. Those are what we call crustage. Um, the very simple way of learning how to do needlework. And very intricate. Right. <laughs> Young girls are um, starting to learn that with their mom, their aunt, at as early as six, seven year old. And then put on their traditional clothes. costumes. Right. The um, Signal to a good family is that by New Year time, if they can display themselves with lots of artwork, that means that they're a family of hard work. And certainly, your family is of hard work because I'm good. At this apron that goes over the, the skirt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? With That's a, yeah, what we call the uh, sash that goes in front of it. Yeah, it's. Lots of therapy that goes into that when you do that. <laughs> yes, great therapy. <laughs> right. And you have something to show for it when you're done, right? Exactly. You know, it's just writing a check. <laughs> exactly. Right. Now, another option of the Hmong culture and their beautiful handiwork will be the story quilts. And this is where I get the goosebumps. Yes, yes. The story quilt, or what we call embroidery, um, tells stories. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, we only do it you know, for display of um, the artwork. But in the refugee camps, it was soon discovered that it could become a great income source yes. for many, many of us in the refugee camps because the story tells the story. In this particular one, it tells the short journey of Hmong refugees from Laos chase to the Mekong River and cross the Mekong River into the Thailand and become refugees in the refugee camps in Thailand. So this is a short story. Yes. But we'd like to now show you the unabridged story of this. Right. This is a, this is a quilt that is 90 by about 45 mm -hmm. and, and inches, and the story starts at the upper left-hand corner. Right. And in this particular big one, yes, it tells the story um, of the Hmong live in what we call China right now, 1,000 years ago. Uh, we lived there, and then in the Han Dynasty, uh, many Hmong decided to move away when there was a lot of restriction about can't mm -hmm. practice your language and your culture. So a lot of Hmong moved into, into China. So you see towards, you know, past that, the Hmong were in um, Laos, living up in the mountain peacefully yes. for many, many years. And then moving on to the um, right there, you see the soldiers, the airplane yes. and all of that. That's about the Vietnam War when the Hmong were recruited to fight with the U.S. against the path at Lao. And so that whole fighting scene talks about the Vietnam War. And then when the U.S. has withdrawn, you know, in mm -hmm. 75, it shows the Hmong has then um, been marked for extinction from the path of Laos. So Hmong started to escape from Laos into Thailand. So moving, the, you see the people coming down the stream and then crossing the Mekong River into Thailand and greeted by Thai soldier into the refugee camps and then after we live in the wow. camps, you know, for um, years waiting for opportunities, we have opportunity to resettle in third world in the United States and other countries. So the table there yes. shows, you know, yes. Hmong taking interview from the um, American USA people. And then the bus shows the leaving behind what we know in the refugee mm -hmm. camps and then going into Bangkok and take the plane and flew to the United I, States. Wow, how, yeah, how, so it's, what a story. Yes. And quickly, the third form of art quilt are the reverse applique in traditional colors. Right. And we'll show you th three traditional colors. And then I think what is so f charming is mm -hmm. what's coming next is just intricate beyond belief. Tiny, tiny. Tiny. Very tiny. And then some of us may own Hmong quilt works in non-traditional colors. Right. Right. 
And they've done this for economic purposes. Right. In the refugee camps, it was quickly discovered mm -hmm. that um, uh -huh. it would be better. Mm -hmm. For Caucasians to buy right. this, this color. Right. And we how, changed the color to meet their needs. How amazing. Well, thank you, Mai Zhang. Well, thank You're you. You're delightful, and your work is spectacular, and the work of your other friends. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank I you. I appreciate it more than ever. And thank you for joining us on Sewing with Nancy during this two-part series on decorative stitch thread painting. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy and Karen Linduska have written a fully illustrated book entitled Decorative Stitch Thread Painting, which includes all the information from this two-part series. It's $9.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com backslash 2321. Order item number BK2321, Decorative Stitch Thread Painting. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Cabinets, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.